G'day tubers, today with a heavy heart I have to admit that um, I've been told about a fire, um, a fire with a DIY power wall. Now this is in my workshop on my workshop floor, um, I'm basically showing you that's my multimeter, that cell caught fire and that cell caught fire. Um, so I'm just showing you there's no heat in it, um, some of those batteries have been sitting in water for several hours, um, yes they were thrown in water because what else do you do right? Okay. Let's get off this view and have a look at what we've got down here. All right, from the editing desk, this is a couple of hours later. Um, I'm gonna insert this first, so people are gonna ask this question for sure. Um, I decided to hook the Batrium up and just have a look. Um, I did this after the next bit. It's all asked about face, but it won't really matter at the end of the day. Um, and what I found was, and I'm referencing the screen, Relay 2 was connected on the Batrium but it was set up for output five and output six. So five should have been up in relay two and output six shouldn't have been there. You'll have a look on a little image there. Um, also found a problem with the Batrium software where the um, inverter wasn't working via CAN bus because of incorrect settings. That could have happened years ago, I don't know. But anyway, that was definitely there, but dirt certainly didn't contribute to those cells catching fire. Um, given that it's double, the cell was double fused, the, obviously the fuses didn't blow um and one caught fire so even if the shunt trip had have tripped it still would have been in exactly the same fault state nothing would have nothing would have saved anything um however it does mean that the temperature sensors wouldn't have triggered so there, there is that as well but anyway enjoy the rest of the video thank you very much for tuning in and please i hope we all learn something from this um stay safe Press play. Okay, so this video is going to be all handheld and I'm just gonna run through what I've seen so far. Um, now, what happened was they were having an event or something. Now, I've only got second, like I've got secondhand information. Um, I didn't see this installed. I've never seen a photograph of it installed. I've never seen anything of this. It was in an off-grid property way out the back of nowhere. Um, and they were having a drink or something and then they heard the smoke alarms and they went running out to around the house trying to find the location of it and in the like it's a little out shitty thing was their power wall and what they saw was just smoke everywhere um, at the point of them getting there apparently there was uh, no flames um, and there wasn't any cells shooting off everywhere but as, uh, as they were decommissioning them, trying to get them outside, let me bring you in a little bit closer. Now, please remember, this has been in water, so disregard the, the amount of rust and stuff on it. Literally, uh, these two were hosed. Uh, these two were either side of the, these two batteries. It's a little bit of a weird configuration. I'm not gonna go through that. Each battery. Now, interesting, that, that was in water for at least two hours and we've still got four volts. Now, I put uh, that one in water for another hour and I didn't change the voltage at all. So it was clean water. Obviously it wasn't shorting out that much, but eventually the rust will get into it and they'll catch fire. So these will have to go outside straight after this video and get disposed of properly. So my first thought was under discharged, over, overcharged, but he did have a Batrium Watchmon 1 on there, and I've got that as well, and a whole heap of the long ones. And I can see from that, now again, I didn't go out there, so, and and I think he's too embarrassed. He's, he, he, I don't have a phone number or anything. He contacted me from a private number. Um, but you can see he's got CAN bus sorted out there. Um, he's got something else there, power. And then one will be a shunt trip. I can't even see what that one is, my eyes aren't. And that's another relay, so that might be the shunt. Uh, what's that one? Oh, that'll be the power as well. So we had power there, power there. He had CAN bus there to an inverter. Um, then he had a shunt, and then he had the comms for the long ones. So that wall, I haven't looked at the configuration yet. I've just put that on a power bank just to make sure it turns on and stuff. Um, so let's run through what I have seen so far. Now, these cells here, that cap on the end is almost completely missing. You can almost see the solder 
has moved off the top. Now only two cells caught fire and that was in the process. He actually cut the ends off. This is what they should look like. All nice and tidy. And I mean, it is a well-built battery from what I can see. I was going out there, well, I was going to have a look at it and go, well, you know, this looks shit, but this has been in service. I'm going on the age of that. And I'm gonna say three and a half to four and a half years it's been in service. Um, and and this, so this is, I believe was used every day to run everything. Nice clean solders. Now it's also, and this, this scares me, fused both sides. So something happened to these cells that wasn't enough for the fuse to blow, but it's enough to run catch fire, which scares the shit out of me, if I should be honest. Um, so we've got two cells that went on fire. Now, if they hadn't gone in water, I would have tried to charge these up, but they're, they're just too far gone. I don't, you know, they're really, really rusted. But this, this cell here was one that was directly beside it. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was left or right. And you can see, he got it in time. He didn't, he did just cut it out and ripped it off the wall. Or I'm assuming ripped off the wall and got it outside. or got it in open air because none of the other cells were damaged or anything like that. That one's got a little bit of black stuff on that side. Oh, it's got a lot of black stuff on that side. There we go. So, um, I can't see. Now, every one of these cells was about four volts, close enough to four volts for me not to really be concerned. It was four o'clock in the afternoon, so we're coming to the end of a charge cycle. There was 10 kilowatt hours uh, in service on a five kilowatt inverter, I believe. Now this is, this is the, the, he gave me a two minute version so quickly, and then gave me a point on the side of the road to come pick it up. Um, now I didn't buy any of this. He gave this part to me, but he does have other batteries. He hasn't even put into service. The build quality, I don't think that's in question at all. So, I mean, there is that blue cell there. I think that is a non-name brand cell from memory. So we've got a couple of Sanyos and stuff in there. Heaps of these pink ones, whatever they are. Only some of them are like that. Um, and they're all tested. So they're 2,700 milliamp hours. So they were tested cells. They weren't just thrown in there. Um, I wasn't able to ask him whether, or well, I forgot, whether they will use repacker to build them or anything. But I do have enough of these cells, the ones we ripped out, that I could put them on the eye charger, charge and discharge them a few times, get their capacity and try and make an assumption. But that's a lot of work. So what do you guys, do you guys want me to go deep with this? But there's not much more I can do. I mean, I could potentially take that, pull it all apart, retest every cell. Uh, and that would give me some idea on what's written on these cells and what they are now after four years of service um he actually gave me the original charges as well now this one here this one here this cell here has never been in service um it's got no ends on it it's raw it's nice and clean still 2500 milliamp hour cell there 4.2 volts so it did look like he had some planning with building it 22 and 4 volts again um so they're nice clean packs. So it makes me wonder, I mean, I'm grateful that he had a alarm. I'm grateful that he had it outside. If this had been inside in like a habitable space, man, he, he could have lost everything. So that, I'm hoping that's not a knee jerk video. I'm trying to uh, get some real information rather than guessing, but it's, it's, it's hard considering the, the plan was to actually test those two batteries and then test them against that one and then try and make an assumption of what the cells were that went south and all that sort of stuff but I don't th I just don't think that's going to work but just in case anybody was interested I've got the two batteries now right up in my backyard against a brick wall um, and I've just got a couple of resistors where are they there we go they're nice and hot so that's 50 odd degrees 70 degrees cars going past and that's 60 odd degrees so it's going to leave them out here in the garden um, until they go completely dead flat and then do the other batteries unfortunately i've only got two of these resistors 
so I'll do the other two batteries as well so try and try and make these safe and recycle them give them the burial that they actually deserve anyway tubers um, this is Pete I really appreciate you tuning in and having a look please go go nuts in the comments below let me know what you think let me know how we can do this better um, yeah maybe that's the solution is something like the Australian standards want in a sealed container um, but yeah it's a wake-up call and if anybody out there watching this video just go out and check your batteries just go out and have a look see if there's any corrosion on any of the cells see if there's any rust coming through on any of the cells do a voltage check even if you've got uh, any sort of BMS Man, grab your multimeter and do a voltage check grab a sharpie put the voltage on each cell stay safe have fun thank you very much for tuning in and i'll see you on the next one